All praises to the Most High, the Creator of Creators, the Framer and the Shaper of All. Greetings, love and life to my Melanations, my Copper Colored Nations, and to the seekers of truth from all persuasions. Thank you for tuning in for this intro presentation that will hopefully assist in rescinding cognitive dissonance abound regarding the documented, recorded, and depicted ancient history of the Americas and its oldest inhabitants that can be visibly seen in the most ancient artifacts. This presentation will illustrate the truth that I, like millions of other indigenous Americans who are known as misnomers and bywords, are in fact the true descendants of the ancient American civilizations from antiquity and before history. This evidence is seen in the most ancient sculptures, carvings, murals, writings, and many other relics and artifacts from times immemorial until just a few centuries ago. They are the images and the depictions of and by the people themselves, with the very distinctive physiognomy of dark complexions, broad noses, coarse hair and afros, braids and locks, and naturally plump lips. Physical features and traits that have been historically and unequivocally classified as Negroid. is a reconstructed face of a young woman who lived more than 11,500 years ago in a rock shelter in southeastern Brazil. She was nicknamed Luzia. Phenotypical analysis. Her facial features included a narrow oval cranium, projecting face, and pronounced chin, strikingly dissimilar to most Native Americans and their indigenous Siberian forebearers. Anthropologists variously described Luzia's features as Negroid, resembling those of indigenous Australians, Melanesians, and Negritos of Southeast Asia. Anthropologist Walter Nevis suggested that Luzia's features most strongly resembled those of Australian Aboriginal peoples. Did you know the aboriginals who were first called Negroes by the Spaniards have histories in Americas that predates Egypt by thousands of years? Today, the majority of their true descendants have been displaced and erased as African Americans. There were tribes that were already here, 
And unfortunately, most people still believe that all blacks came from the ships from Africa. So let's talk about some of those statistics. According to PBS.org, only 12.5 million Africans were kidnapped from Africa, but only 10.7 million actually survived. And of that 10.7 million, 388,000 came to North America, and the rest were distributed to South America and the Caribbean. But the first people that were here were the American Aborigines. According to Indigenous and Americans.com, the American Aborigines owned 1 million square miles worth of land in the Louisiana Territory, southeastern region of Florida, and the colony of California. In many areas of America, black nations existed way before Christopher Columbus even arrived. Those lands were rightfully the American Aborigines before they were stolen and given to the white settlers. Aboriginal, first, original, primitive. Aboriginal people are the first inhabitants of a country. Aboriginal tribes of America. Aboriginal adjective, an original or primitive inhabitant. The first settlers in a country are called aboriginals. So the Australia Aborigines weren't discovered until 1606. This means that the first aboriginals were found in the Americas in 1492. Ancient Pyramid City of Curl Soup in Peru, Kichiwa, Tabuntinsuyu, over 5,000 years old, predated the Egyptian dynasties by two millennia. Vichima in Caro, Peru, was one of the major populations of Caro in the Soup Valley during the Norcho Chico era. Caro Soup, Norte Chico, this Indian culture flourished during the beginning of the Egyptian dynasties. Cerro Sitchin, known for the hundreds of base relief etchings of graphic imagery depicting ex-wielding warriors decapitating and mutilating enemies. The Paracas had extensive knowledge of irrigation and water management and they made significant contributions in textile arts. Paracas candelabra, also called the candelabra of the Andes or the trident of Peru, is a well-known prehistoric geoglyph found on the northern face of the Paracas Peninsula at Pisco Bay in Peru. The reason for the candelabra's creation is unknown to scientists, although it is most likely a representation of the trident, a lightning rod of the god Viracocha, who is seen in mythology throughout South America. This trident was known to the ancient civilizations of Peru and the Vedic people during the Ramayana period. This trident, or the Paracas candelabra, is etched on the mountain of Andes and can be seen really glittering from the sky. It is acting as the compass for the end of the eastern furthest point. The Chavin of the northern Andean highlands of Peru, known for their construction of temples and their advancements in engineering and metallurgy, successfully cultivating crops including potatoes and maize in the dry, arid climate of the Andean highlands. The Nazca are the archaeological culture known for extremely complex textiles, an array of crafts and technologies such as ceramics and gigantic geoglyphs that can only be fully appreciated from higher altitudes in the sky, with lines stretching 30 miles and biomorphs ranging from 50 to 1200 feet in length or about the size of 10 football fields. The Moshe are well known for their high quality of crafts and artwork. The Moshe were specialists in art and craftwork producing pottery, murals, textiles of cotton and wool, 
and fashion jewelry and other objects of precious metal. The Moshe used molds to mass produce pottery, which they decorated with painted scenes of daily life and ceremonies, especially their naturalistic and articulate ceramics depicted their facial features and physiognomy in colorful portraitures. The Moshe were a priesthood culture ruled by priest kings and priestesses. The Moshe daily life included fishing, irrigation of the land to grow crops such as maize, potatoes, cotton, peppers, and peanuts. The Moshe also built a vast ceremonial center containing two enormous mud brick pyramids. And several of the Moshe priest kings and priestesses were buried in large tombs near the pyramids. of the Wade Empire. At the height of its glory, the Wade Empire dominated most of South America for about 400 years. One of the larger tribes that the Wades avoided for more than a thousand years was the Moshe tribe. The Moshe tribe had existed in South America for thousands of years. The earliest South American tribes that came to North Africa 7,000 years ago and built ancient Egypt included Moshes. In an epic battle that would forever alter the course of South American and African history, the Moshes defeated the Wades. The Moshe Ware War was the most defining war not only in South American history, but also in African history. When the Moshes defeated the Wares, they destroyed the Ware Empire. Moshes hated Wares because of their senseless killing of humans for heads. The Moshes went to a lot of trouble to destroy everything that reminded them of the Ware Empire. They also expelled the Wares from South America. Most of the Wares fled to Africa. The Chamu maintained the largest and most important political system in Peru before being conquered by the Inca. The Chamu expanded and gained power over their 500 year period through intensive farming techniques and hydraulic works, which joined valleys to form complexes of buildings for ceremonies, housing, and other facilities. The Chanca, Quichua, and Chamu were usurped by the Inca in the 1400s. In 1532, the Inca Empire was conquered in the Spanish conquest. After conquering the Chanca, Quichua, and Chamu in the 1400s, the Inca then assimilated and usurped much of the indigenous civilizations along the north coast of Peru, in particular the Chamu high culture, including their political organization, irrigation systems, and road engineering into their own imperial kingdom. According to history, Archaeologists have assigned very ancient or prehistoric artifacts and ruins to the people that usurped the north coastal region of Peru in the 1400s. Artifacts and ruins that are eons older than the very presence of these people in the Americas. The Valdivia culture of Ecuador is one of the oldest settled cultures recorded in the Americas. The Valdivia left behind a legacy of artwork in both stone and clay. Quimbaya civilization of Bogota or present-day Colombia are noted for their gold work characterized by technical accuracy and detailed precision and designs of gold in human images. The ancient people of Costa Rica were a makeup of several ancient tribes such as the Caribs, Omax, Mayans, and the Corobisi, who were Costa Rica's most prolific craftsmen.
1904 vintage illustration depicting native Amazonian Indians or Native American hunters in French Guiana, South America. The Mokaya. The Mokaya's origins lie in the Soconusco region, an area which covers parts of the Pacific coast, Mexico, and western Guatemala. The culture is believed to have developed Mesoamerica's earliest known settlements. The Soconusco region is divided by modern-day archaeologists into three distinct zones. In the Mazatan region of Chiapas Pacific Coast, just west of the present-day border between Mexico and Guatemala, one of the earliest hierarchical societies rose. Archaeologists call this culture Makaya, or people of the corn, in the Mishizokian language that was spoken by the region's ancient inhabitants. The Maya are one of the best known of the classical civilizations of Mesoamerica. According to the World History Encyclopedia, the archaic period of Mesoamerica began around 7000 BCE or before the common or Christian era, and the Maya origin in the Yucatan region began around 2600 BCE or before the common or Christian era. However, the early pre-classic or formative period dating for the Maya of 1800 BCE is more widely accepted, which still predates the archaeological dating of the Omac civilization by centuries. The Maya occupied much of the northwestern part of the Isthmus of Central America, from Chiapas and the Yucatan through Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, and El Salvador, and into Nicaragua. The earliest Maya were agricultural people growing crops such as maize or corn, beans, squash, and cassava. The Maya civilization is also noted for its logosyllabic script, the most sophisticated and highly developed writing system known in the pre-colonial Americas, as well as for its art, architecture, mathematics, calendar, and astronomical system. The Mayans developed a calendar of 18 20-day months plus a set of five days. This calendar system also included what scholars call a long count that kept track of time by using different units that ranged and lived from a single day to millions of years. Contrary to popular belief, the Maya civilization never vanished. While many cities were abandoned over time, other cities such as Chichen Itza grew and flourished. Archaeologists have found that early Maya cities were carefully planned with pyramids, temples, and other structures that were built using a grid system, confirmed by ancient ruins of urban planning and sophistication.
El Negro. Tres Zapotes is located on the slopes of the Tuxla Mountains in the state of Veracruz. It is one of the most important Olmec sites and the first to be written about. Pictured as an Olmec head dated circa 1600 BC. The name Olmec was actually invented by scholars, derived from the Nahuatl word Omacado or Omeca, which means inhabitant of the rubber country. Olmec is a reference to the rubber production in the area where many of the artifacts have been found. Much of what is known about the Olmecs was inferred from archaeological excavations at these sites, which have uncovered large earthen pyramids and platforms and monument stone carvings. Olmec Inventions The Olmecs are heavily copied by later civilizations. From the Olmec comes priest-ruled city-states, the rubber people who created rubber as early as 1600 BCE, the Mesoamerican calendar, writing, the idea of zero, and the ball game. Olmecs are especially identified with 17 huge stone heads, ranging in height from 5 feet to 11 feet tall, with flat faces and full lips, wearing helmet-like headgear, as well as their intricate works fashioned in jade. It has been speculated that the Olmecs derive in part from the neighboring Mokea or Mixo cultures.
the etymology of barbecue. From the 1690s, framework for grilling meat, fish, etc. From American Spanish, barbacoa. From Arawakan Haiti, IET, barbacoa. Framework of sticks set upon posts. The raised wooden structure the West Indians used to either sleep on or cure meat. children of America look like the soil in America. They carry the precious blood of America from the earth. All indigenous blooded people have the love and power of life with earth within their blood. They are a part of life on earth. Everything else in their location is a foreigner or a mutation of one. It is as simple as that. Excerpt from The Hidden Ancestral Identity of the American Negro by Redine A. America Harrison. The various cultures collectively termed mound builders were prehistoric indigenous inhabitants of North America who during a 5,000 year period constructed various styles of earthen mounds for religious, ceremonial, burial, and elite residential purposes. These included ancient cultures of the Archaic period of 8,000 BCE, the Woodland period of 1,000 BCE, which are the Calusa, Adena, and Hopewell cultures, and Mississippian period dating from roughly 3500 BCE to the 16th century, living in the regions of the Great Lakes, the Ohio River Valley, the Mississippi River Valley, and its tributary waters. The namesake cultural trait of the mound builders was the building of mounds and other earthworks. These burial and ceremonial structures were typically flat-topped pyramids or platform mounds, flat-topped or rounded cones, elongated ridges, and sometimes a variety of other forms. They were generally built as part of a complex villages for ceremonies, burials, and housing. According to the anthropology, the majority of the mound builder crania is negroid. Craniometry can determine with 95% accuracy. Thus, the descendants of the mound builders of North America are the displaced people today called the African Americans.
the Anasazi, 900 to 1350 CE. In the American Southwest, the Anasazi managed for a time to successfully irrigate and farm the challenging desert environment. They also engaged in extensive road construction and turquoise mining and trading. A combination of climate change, environmental collapse, and hostile invaders most likely explains the abandonment of their early population centers. Their descendants were the cliff-dwelling Native Americans encountered by the Spanish who called them Pueblo, meaning village. America strays away from the ideals of justice. The goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up in the destiny of America. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Father or the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here.
Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star Spangled Banner were written, we were here. their masters in the midst of the most humiliating and oppressive conditions, yet out of a bottomless vitality, they continued to grow and develop. Land of the free, land of the thief, home of the brave, home of the slave, American, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper-colored races, the greatest American deception. <laughs> 